The aging component is a great way to quickly get started building a powerful AI app. It's designed to get you going really quickly, but have all the knobs and dials allowing you to customize it to your own requirements. If that sounds like something you're interested in, then stick around as I'm gonna go through all the things you need to know to get started. How to install it, what its key concepts are, and how to use its most powerful features. So grab yourself a lovely cup of tea, and let's get started. Okay, so first things first is I'm gonna assume you have a convex project running. Um, if not, check out the convex docs for how to get started there. Now let's install our agent component with bun install at convex dev slash agent. Once we've done that, let's create a file in our slash convex directory called convex.convig.ts. And this is uh, how we're gonna set up our components that we're gonna use in convex. So here we define our app and then we import our agent and then tell the app that we're gonna use that agent component. So now we're set up, let's, uh, let's define our first agent. So agents are our top level object that we're gonna to use to represent our assistant that's gonna assist the user with their prompt. So we can give it a name, choose what chat and text embedded models we wanna use. Uh, and then we're going to use, well, for this demo, we're gonna use GPT 4.1 mini and text embedding three small. Um, and then we can give it some instructions. So these are sometimes referred to as our system prompt and they should just be like general instructions that are gonna be cons constant for the length of your interaction with the assistant. Finally, we're gonna provide max steps. Um, this is because the agent uh, is gonna call tools in a loop. So it could potentially get into an infinite loop scenario. So you just kinda of wanna bound the number of steps that it can do here. And there are lots of other options that we don't have time to go into here, but uh, check out the agent component docs uh, if you'd like to learn more about some of these. So now that we have our agent, we can use it to actually create a thread like this. So here we've created a convex mutation that uses the agent to create a thread. Um, and we give it an optional user ID so that we can restrict access to the thread and its messages. Then on the client side, we could call it with just like any other convex mutation like this. So here we have a very simple app that either shows the thread if we have it, Otherwise, it creates it um, via this button on click here. And once it's created, we then just set the thread ID locally. And then that means that the thread's then shown. So now when we try this out, we should see that there's no thread created initially until we click the button. Uh, and then we see nothing as the thread has been created, but we don't actually have any implementation yet for the thread. Okay, so now we have a thread. Let's use the agent to send a message to it. We'll do this in the very simplest of way for now, but we'll make this quite a bit nicer later on with a bit of streaming. So here we define an action that's gonna take our thread ID in and the prompt from the user. And then we're gonna ask the agent to continue the thread with our given thread ID. So this continue thread function here is kind of a helper wrapper that's basically some nice syntax sugar that we can use on the next line to call out to the model with the prompt from the user. So now that we have that our action, we can then call it from the client in our uh, thread view component like this. So here we define a basic UI that takes prompt from the user here. And then when we click the button, we trigger the form submit here, which in turn calls the send message to agent action here. And then once we get the results back, we can save it into the local states here and then present it onto the screen down here. All right, so let's see this in action now. So when I type a message like, hello, please tell me what is the best kind of tea, we get an answer back. Super nice. And notice if I do a follow-up prompt here, the agent is gonna know when it responds what I'm talking about. That's because the agent component has automatically pulled in the relevant message history for us and added that as part of the call to the, to the LLM when we call it. And this is super nice because Doing this yourself is more work than you might think, particularly as the message history starts getting longer and longer and longer. Okay, this is nice so far, but uh, you will have noticed that as we ask additional questions, it just simply replaces our previous question. So it would be nice if we had a more chat-like interface so we could see our previous messages in here. Now, although you could manage this yourself by writing into the Convex database, the result of the generate text call, you don't need to as the agent component already is saving the messages for us. So we just need a way to retrieve those messages and then show them on the screen. So let's define a message list component and put it in our thread view component here. Then inside there, we're gonna use a special use thread messages hook 
from the um, agent component import. And the use thread messages hook is going to take in a thread ID and some options and a convex query that's going to use, that we're going to use to retrieve the messages from the server. So let's have a look at that query now. So here we have a convex query that takes a thread ID and some pagination options. Um, we have to supply those because our React hook, the use thread messages hook, on the client is going to return back a paginated list of results. So it needs to be supplied with the current cursor position from the page. Then we're going to use our agent that we defined before to list the messages for a given thread. We can also optionally here define some other parameters to filter out the kind of messages we get back. But for now, let's just keep it simple. Okay, then back on the client, we can just add some basic UI to show the messages. And now when we run it, we should see our messages from before, including the ones we sent and the ones from the assistant. And we can send another message like this one and we'll see our message show up and then we should see the assistant message show shortly after. All right, now our agent is good, but it's a little bit limited in what it can do. It can only respond based upon what's inside of its own head or whatever we tell it. It would be nice if the agent itself could pull in a bit more information by itself. Well, thankfully this is really easy to do with the agent component using its tool calling ability. So if we hop back to our agent definition from before, now, if we add a tools object here, we can define uh, any number of tools that we want our agent to have access to. So for example, let's create a tool that is, I don't know, going to get the current weather. So you'll notice here we use this create tool function that the agent component provides us, which takes an object with a description, args, and a handler. And the AI is going to be able to see the description and the args definition. So make sure they're accurate um, if you want to give the LLM the best chance to have success here. And the handler uh, looks very much like a convex action function. So we have a context and an args here, which is going to contain our location uh, field. So using the context, we could do a query to look something up in the convex database or a mutation if we wanted to change something. but in the case of this get weather function, I think we just want to do a fetch to some remote service uh, like this. But for the purpose of this demo, we're just going to mock it out with something like this. So if the user asks what the weather is in England, it's going to be rainy because <laughs> let's be honest, it probably is. Um, otherwise, it's going to be sunny. OK, let's try it out. OK, now, so when I asked for what the weather is in England, I am told correctly that it is rainy. And then if I ask about what the weather is in Australia, then of course it's sunny. That's great, but notice that there are these additional empty messages showing up here. If I just quickly hop back into the code and log out the messages from the use thread messages hook here, and then back to the browser, we can inspect the messages in the console and have a look what's going on. If I open up this one here, we can see that we have our user message at the start that we sent, and then at the end we have the final message from the assistant. But then also in the middle here, we have these messages which are looking at them are the tool calls that the agent used to look up the weather. So what we could do if we didn't want to show these empty boxes here, which aren't very nice, is we could update our React code to show some so tool calls and the tool call results in line here. But I think for this demo, it might be simple if we just exclude them from our messages. So we can do that easily if we hop back into our list thread messages query. Now, if we just update the list messages options object to add the exclude tool messages, true. And then we hop back into the browser, we should see that those empty messages now disappear. Nice, looking good now. Okay, so one last thing I noticed before is when we asked it to generate a story, we had to wait for the entire result to come back before we showed anything on the screen. What it would be nice is if we could do what ChatGPT or T3Chat or something else like that does, which is stream the results back before the entire message is finished so we can show the user something on the screen. Well, fortunately, Convex has also got our back here with the Asian component. It has a stream messages feature. Let's take a look. So if we head back to our messages list component, we can add another parameter to the options object for the use thread messages right here. So we want to stream the messages in as soon as they become available. So we set stream to true here. But if we do that, we're going to get a TypeScript error. That's because we need to update our list thread messages query to add uh, some stream args. So let's do that now. 
Okay, so these are needed um, to do the proper streaming uh, syncing. And so once we've done that, we can then also add another call down here to the agent to grab some of that streaming information. And then we uh, return it all together with the pagination from the list messages. Now, if we return back to the browser and we again ask for a long story and uh, nothing happens, it doesn't stream. That's because we still need to change one more thing. So let's hop back into our send message to agent action. And instead of our generate text call here, let's replace it with the stream text call instead, which is going to kick off the streaming process and then persist it into the database. Thanks to this save stream deltas argument here. By the way, you can control how big the deltas are and thus how many writes the database the component's gonna do if we change this true here to an object with a different chunking strategy. But to keep this demo simple, let's just leave it as true for now. And the final thing we need to do is call consume stream so that the we wait for the entire stream to finish before the action finishes. Otherwise, we'll get dangling promises. Okay, let's hop back into the browser now and then ask it again for a long story. And now, nice, we should see it come streaming in. Very, very nice. Okay, well, I think I'm gonna have to leave it at this point as I don't want this video to get too long, but there is just so much more I could talk about at the agent component. I mean, just under the topic of streaming alone, I could talk about optimistic updates or HTTP streaming or stream smoothing or hybrid streaming, just so much. And then more general topics, like from the aging component, we could talk about image uploading or RAG or MCP or human in the loop or the playground UI, which by the way is amazing, um, or workflows or advanced filtering and storage options or just so much more. So if you're keen to see more about these kind of advanced aging component topics, then make sure you are subscribed to the channel as I'll definitely be doing a follow-up video. And let me know in the comments down below which topic you'd like to see me cover next and I'll see what I can do. And if you can't wait for me to do that, then definitely check out the agent component documentation and its associated examples, as it really does do a great job of explaining things. Okay, well, that's it for me for now. I hope you really enjoyed this video. And if you did and you wanna check out more content like this, you might wanna check out my other video here, the MikeBot V2 video I did recently. I also use the agent component in that to condense 20 years of blog posts down to a chat bot that I embedded onto my blog. It was a heap of fun. Okay, until next time, thanks for watching, cheerio.